time, yes. Lesson four. Lesson four. What are we doing? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Now you know. This is what we're doing. We are going to sign, to solve rather. Look at this word. It doesn't say multiplication. It says multiplicative. That's a mouthful. Multiplicative. Comparison word problems using measurement conversion tables. What's the key here? Word problems. Okay. Multiplication. There will be multiplication. Will there be comparisons? You betcha. Okay. And we're going to do stuff with measurement as we've been doing. So that module seven is all about, baby. All right. Let's do it. Let's warm it up, though. Get the engine going. 1,000 meters. Remember what a meter stick looks like? 1,000 of those. That's a that's a fa fa way to run. It's one kilometer. Okay, good. So that would mean that 2,000 meters is two kilometers, and 3,000 meters is a three kilometers, and 6,000 meters is a long, long way to run, right? Okay, six kilometers. Now, Let's go to, remember, see, we're doing all length here, so we did meters and kilometers. Now we're doing centimeters. Picture that meter stick again. That's one meter containing 100 centimeters, just as one dollar contains 100 cents. So, one meter. All right, you know what to do. 200 centimeters equals two meters. 300 centimeters, three meters. How about 700 centimeters? Seven meters, got it. Now we're gonna switch over to customary system from the happy little metric, and we're doing length here still, so we'll see feet, yards, and inches. We don't do miles in this one. So three feet is one. Picture not the meter stick now, but the yard stick, which is pretty close, right? So that's three feet is one yard. All right, how about six feet then? It'd be two yards, you see? Three and three are six, okay. Nine feet three yards, and this is useful for football and golf and buying cloth at the fabric store. It's all done in yards. Uh, 21 feet, oh wait, now we see, are we doing the other way now? No, okay, 21 feet, divide by three, this is seven yards, okay. Now we're gonna switch over to inches, 12 inches, picture a ruler now, 12 inches is one feetsums, that's right, one foot. How about 24 inches? Two feet, great. How about 36 inches? Three feet, oh, also known as, yes, you remember, one yard. Very nice. Now we're going to weight. So we're going to see grams and kilograms in the metric system. In the customary system, we'll see pounds and ounces. All right, we'll start off. 1,000 grams is one kilogram. And this is part of what makes the metric system so easy to use, so user-friendly. Because if this were meters and kilometers, you see how it's the same concept? I hope you noticed that. Now you did. All right. You noticed it. All right. 2,000 grams is 2 kilograms. How about 3,000 grams? 3 kilograms. How about going over customary system for weight? 16 ounces is 1 pound. Good. And, and by the way, I, I don't know if I told you this already, but that LB... Um, abbreviation comes from the Latin word libra, which simply means weight. So um, that's why the the astrological sign Libra is holding scales right there. Okay, Libra means to weigh, uh, it means weight. And the OZ for ounce is weird because there's no Z in ounce, but uh, that's from not the Latin, but the Italian word onza, which is simply the Italian word for ounce, which does have a Z in it. So I know, it's totally wackadoodle. And while we're at it, I'll tell you one last thing about these abbreviations, is that pounds, plural pounds, can be abbreviated either simply LB or LBS, because Libra is already a plural, just like the word data. One piece of datum, two data. I know, it's wackadoodle. More fun with English, haha. <laughs> All right, 32 ounces then is two pounds, and how about 48 ounces? This would be 16, 16, and 16 makes 48, so that's three pounds, good. Now, we are here, the multiplicative comparison word problems using measurement conversion tables, Woohoo! We're actually not gonna use the measurement conversion tables. You have those, though, 
in your practice sheets from the first three lessons, so you can refer back to them as needed. And uh, as I've been doing with this, this is about working with these measurement systems and not about reteaching you multiplication and so on. So I'm not going to go through all step by step on the multiplication, but uh, just kind of cruise through the lesson part and then you can get your practice. Uh, interesting thing though, excuse me, <coughs> is that the problem set is what we're doing. So when we're done, you're actually done with the problem set and then you add the exit ticket. Good old homework time after that. Let's do it. Here's our question. Beth is allowed two hours of TV time each week. I bet you get more. Do you? Do you? Her sister is allowed two times as much. And Beth, we stop right there because what is Beth saying? That's not fair! <laughs> I know, it isn't. What is up with that? Who wrote this question? All right. Oh, you know who wrote this question? Beth's sister. All right, let's start over. Beth is allowed two hours of TV time each week. Her sister is allowed two times as much. How many minutes? 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 Notice we were given hours here and now we're being asked minutes of TV. Can Beth's sister watch? Okay, well, let's start off making a nice little tapey diagram -y. Here's Beth, Beth's sister. Beth gets two hours a week. Sister gets twice as much. And how much is that? Well, we can do two plus two is four, right? So it's four hours. But the question is how many minutes, all right? So we're just saying four hours times 60 minutes per hour would be the complete way of writing this out. Four hours times 60 minutes per hour. You just do four times six, ride the time since slide, also known as pop on the zero. Okay, 240 minutes, great. And so then we just need a statement. Beth's sister is allowed to watch 240 minutes of TV each week. Yeah, that's it for that one. Yeah, it's just like that. Okay, Clay. That's his name. Don't wear it out. Clay weighs nine times as much as his baby sister. Clay weighs 63 pounds. How much does his baby sister weigh in ounces? Now this is one where you have to actually read a little bit more carefully because there's an easy mistake to make here. You see, huh, nine times, 63. Oh, okay, so that's 540 plus 27 is 567. His baby sister weighs 567 pounds. Let me tell you, I've seen some chunky babies in my time, <laughs> but I have never seen a baby that weighs 567 pounds. I know. Um, and then you would have to convert that to ounces because no, as just in the last one, our answer will be in ounces. So don't make that mistake. Think about it. And that is why both your teacher and I want you to draw a tape diagram. We have Clay and Clay's sister. There's his 63 pounds. Now, why did I divide it into nine? Right, because his sister is going to be one of those little cubes. And so when you do this, you're not going to make the mistake of multiplying these two numbers. Yeah, okay, so what are we doing then? Yeah, he's nine times as much. So we could say 63 is nine times what? Also divide, right? 63 divided by nine is seven. So Little sister weighs seven pounds, stop and ask, does that make sense? Yeah, baby sister, seven pounds. Seven pounds is, is an infant, pretty much, but, uh, but still, that's a reasonable answer, okay. So now we need to multiply it by 16 ounces per pound. All right, so this is a two-stepper, and this is where the multiplicative part comes in, 16 ounces per pound. We can do this in our heads, watch. Seven times 10 is 70, hold on to that, 70. 7 times 6 is 42. To add 70 and 42, you could do it this way. You could say, oh, well, from the 42, I can decompose out 30 to get a nice even 100, and that leaves from the 42, 12. So 112 ounces would be the total. There's a multiplication for you if you like looking at that. Uh, 112 ounces. That makes sense. And you just need a statement. Clay's sister, cute little baby, weighs 112 ounces. Lovely. Let's do some more. Helen. Helen got rope. Helen got rope. She has four yards of rope, in fact. Daniel, however, though, is the rope monster. He has four times as much rope as Helen. And notice we were given four yards. Yards is our unit of measurement because the question, again, three in a row here, is different. How many more feet of rope does Daniel have than Helen? Ah, here's where that comparison comes in. Yes, 
And it's because how many more does he have? Now, there's two ways of going about this. You'd probably end up with the right answer either way, but I'm going to show you kind of the easier way. Helen and Daniel, right? Helen has four yards. Cool. Daniel has four times as much. Notice where the bracket is. Oh, that's right. So these are all four, 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 four. We only really need three of them. So instead of figuring out all of Daniel in feet, converting Helen to feet, and then subtracting, we can just easily calculate what is the difference and get directly to our answer. Okay, if you did it the longer way, it probably worked, but I like doing it the shorter way. So four times three feet. Why did I do that? Why? 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 Okay, it's 12 feet. Why? Because these are, yes, three feet. Okay. Um, three times 12 feet, 36 feet. And that's it. Like we done. Daniel has 36 more feet of rope than Helen. You see how it works? All right, good. See, we made that one nice and easy. I like that one. All right, a dishwasher uses 11 liters of water for each cycle. And just to help us visualize this, a liter, you know, a liter bottle's about yay big, right? So that's a liter. So 11 of those for a dishwasher cycle, okay? A washing machine uses five times as much water as a dishwasher uses for each load. Combined, how many milliliters now, we're gonna answer in, we're given liters, but we're gonna answer in milliliters, of water are used for one cycle of each machine. Okay, so what we can do here, similar to that last one, there's a little shortcut method here, um, or a shorter way of doing it with less steps. Less steps is good, not just because like getting it done faster, but fewer calculations means less uh, potential for error. So 11 liters for the dishwasher, the washing machine is five times as much, the bracket is for both of them. So how many of these little cubes do I have? Five and one is six. Ah, you see, so instead of figuring out separately and then combining them, we can just work with that six number. Okay, so we have 11 liters. Let's start by saying how many milliliters is 11 liters? Okay, well, one liter is a thousand milliliters. So it's gonna be 11 times 1,000 or 11,000 milliliters. Good, all right. So this is 11,000 milliliters, so is this and this and this and this and this. Great, now, so it's six of those. I bet you can, you don't have to do like multiplication here, right? Six times 11? Yeah, okay, you see that? So 66,000 milliliters. See where that comes from? Just six times 11 with the three zeros, basically is a way of thinking about it. So then we just need our happy little statement combined. Both machines use 66,000 milliliters water of water for each cycle. Lovely. I think this is the last one. Um, this is one where you also have to read carefully and you can, you can know as you get along, they get a little tougher and that there are more steps. We have to think a bit more. So we are starting off with Joyce and her two pounds of apples, which she bought. Then she bought three times as many pounds of potatoes as she had purchased pounds of apples. Okay, so, okay, we got two pounds of apples and then three times as much for the taters. The melons she bought were 10 ounces lighter than the total weight of the potatoes. Ah, so we do want to find out the weight of the melons, but note that we want that answer in ounces, not pounds and ounces or just pounds or something, but in ounces. Okay, so this is another comparison one, right? We start off with apples, two pounds. Potatoes are three times as much. And now when you get to draw the, the melons, you know it's gonna be one of these and one of these, and then a little bit less than one of these, right? Because it's just 10 ounces less than a potato. So when you draw that tape, it's just gonna be a little bit shorter than the potatoes, see? And what we're trying to find there, marked with the question mark, is the weight of the melons in ounces. What we know is this blank spot here. Right, that's the 10 ounce difference. Great. Okay, so we can do this. Let's start off with the potatoes. Straightforward math there, right? Three times as much times two, it's six pounds. Great, okay. Now, uh, 
a couple of ways we could do this here. Um, what I'm going to do, because we have to put the final answer in ounces anyway, uh, is just convert it to ounces now. 6 times 16. Well, you can do this in your head. Watch. 6 times 10 is 60. Hold on to that. 6 times 6 is 36. 60 and 36. 60 and 30 are 90. And 6, 96. 96 ounces total. And then the, it's just 10 ounces less. So just 96 minus 10. 86 ounces. That's our final answer. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. You want to call a friend? I don't need to call a friend. Call a friend. Just to be nice. I don't want to. The Wellens weigh 86 ounces. Boom! There you go. Ah, look at that exit ticket. We got more melons. Somebody was like, had a hankering for melons that day, I tell you. Then you get to the homework and you know what to do. I think there's like six questions here. And it's very similar to what we just did in the problem set. So do head over to homework time video and we'll do all these completely. Draw, redraw, write the whole thing. Um, starts off, right? Right, we got, we got weight again. We got liters and milliliters. Notice they're all similar. Instead of uh, the rope question we just did, now it's chain. People got ropes and chains. <laughs> I won't make any gang fight jokes, I promise. Uh, and then we have a, and another lazy one where it's a box. <laughs> and notice that a shipment of boxes is a bunch of boxes. Okay, so that's what they mean by a shipment of boxes. How many boxes? I like this one. I've had some students get a little befuddled with this one, though. Um, and there's a nice little shortcut you can do, which I do in the homework time video. And then we get into, yeah, this last one, Tracy and her rain barrel. You know what a rain barrel is for? So you put it, if you have gutters on the house, say, and you put it on the downspout, um, you put a barrel, and you kind of have to keep it sealed in a way so you don't get, like, it doesn't turn into mosquito haven. And so when it rains, it fills up, and then you have a, a hose. It has to be raised up off the ground a little bit. And you have a hose coming out the bottom, so then you can, like, water your plants using rainwater. So rain barrels are awesome. See? And look what you've done. You've gone and done it again. you finished another lesson. Kudos unto you. And I will check in next time. It is once again lesson time.